Hello everyone, I'm Sherry and welcome to Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. It's Sunday, May 1st, and today Pastor Rex is sharing with us from the Word of God titled, The Valley of Praise. But first, please join us in some praise and worship music as we glorify the Lord. Jesus Christ is risen today. No. 
Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you.
the valley of praise. The passage we will base our message today is from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 1 to 30. This passage is the story of Jehoshaphat and his people. King Jehoshaphat was the fourth king of Judah. About year 850 before Christ came, the context of this passage reveals that God's people are divided. Israel, the ten tribes under the leadership of wicked King Ahab and his wife Jezebel, occupy the northern part of Israel. Judah and Benjamin, the two other tribes, the remaining two other tribes under the leadership of Jehoshaphat, occupy the southern part, that is Jerusalem, Judah, the tribe of Judah, and the tribe of Benjamin. Jehoshaphat's reign appears to have been evidenced by devotion to God, affecting every decision of the king. In 2 Chronicles chapter 17, verses 3 to 9, reveals that Jehoshaphat sought the favor of God in every act of his life. He always go to God in every decision of his life as a king and even his personal life. Jehoshaphat was convinced that his nation's character was determined by its devotion to God's direction. If, the, if God directs somebody's life, that is the best life there is. He will be remembered, Jehoshaphat will be remembered as a good king of Judah, honoring God in his leadership. We will learn from the story of Jehoshaphat to consult God in desperate times. Have you been in that situation in life where you are between a hard place and a rock, desperate times in your life. Many of us agree that these are desperate times in our world. If you will read the news of Russia invading Ukraine and how Ukrainian cities are ravaged and destroyed, you will shed a tear. Even children died in that war. Women are, were raped. The, it seems like the whole world right now is engaged in that war, supplying ammunition and armaments to Ukraine. And Russia never gave up. Just this week, we heard of teenage young people fighting in our schools here, in our schools, in our streets, in our community. Kids, teenage kids, are fighting. Not far from us, shootings were heard the other day. People have died in some shootings. It's a desperate time. We need help. But where do we turn? What can we do? 
In the story of Jehoshaphat, we will read about his problem and learn to pray in our desperation as Jehoshaphat and his people prayed. Now let's go to the story, verses 1 and 2. The problem was mentioned in verses 1 and 2. It says, After this, the Moabites and Ammonites, with some of the Mayonites, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazizan, Tamar, that is En Gedi. When we assume that Jehoshaphat felt overwhelmed by the news based on verses, on these verses, see what verses 3 and 4 said. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. He resolved to inquire of the Lord. He is proactive in consulting the Lord. And he proclaimed not only a prayer time, like what we will have in the Church of the Nazarene here in the USA and Canada region, but they hold a fast. Verse 4, the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. They came from all towns in Judah to seek who? To seek God and his direction. So the king is seriously alarmed that not only does he turn to prayer, but also proclaims a fast for the whole nation. As the people come together, they too seek the Lord as their king has set an example for them. They saw their king on his knees, bowing down before the Lord. And the people said, let's do the same thing. Lessons we can learn from this story the people of Judah, through the leadership of their king, committed to prayer. What will you do when a vast army is coming to wage war against you? Pray. Pray. A vast army was a big deal in the ancient Near East during their time. These were brutal days of conquest and war. Wealth and power belonged to the strongest. And the more one conquered, the more power and wealth one possessed. That's why it's very important for them to go and wage war against other nations. Jehoshaphat, when faced with a vast army, went directly to pray. The best part is he directed his people to join him. <laughs> Come on, people. Let's join in prayer. The people responded by coming together and followed the faithful example of their king. Prayer gave them an access to God. Prayer will give us access to God. What was true with Jehoshaphat and his people is true to you and me, to us today. Prayer opens the heart of God. It's a key for you to go in. The creator of the universe hears us when we pray. The next would be Jehoshaphat and his people prayed to the Lord, not to any other idol, but they went to the Lord. Verse 5, Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard, and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. They prayed to the Lord. And who is the Lord? Who is this Lord that they went to and prayed to? He is the God of their ancestors. He is the God who is in heaven. He is the ruler of all the kingdoms of the nations. In his hand is power and might and no one can withstand this God. Hey, don't you like to serve the same God? Yeah. Today we declare that we have the same Lord. We have the same God. Jehoshaphat continued to describe who God is in verses 7 to 9. Verse 7 said, Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? 
They have lived in it and have built it in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress. And you will hear us and save us. Jehoshaphat narrated that God was the source of help. He helped his people remember the faithfulness of God as an encouragement in facing, in his time, a vast army coming to attack them. God has been faithful to you. God has been faithful to me. God has been faithful to all of us. And remember this last sentence, our God never changes. He is still faithful today. Next is Jehoshaphat pres present, his, present his prayer request before God. Verse 10. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of our possession you gave us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Verse 13, all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. So Jehoshaphat and his people have a problem. A vast army is on their way to attack them. Verse 12 gives us the real problem. There is no problem when a vast army will come, but your army is bigger. There's no problem. But in this one, a vast army is coming and your army is... That's what verse 12 said. That's the real problem. It said in verse 12, For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do. Have you been in that kind of a situation in life? The problem is so big you don't know what to do. The bills have to be paid. And so many you don't know what to do. Your marriage has gone south. You don't know what to do. You have some addiction and want to get rid of it. You don't know what to do. Your kids rebel, rebelled against you. You don't know what to do. If you will look at verse 12 again, it did not end in what Jehoshaphat and his people does not know what to do. It says, For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do. What's next? But our eyes... Are on you. Praise the Lord. Woohoo! Our eyes are on you. There is that little word, but, right there. There is no evidence of self reliance here. Jehoshaphat prayed out to God for help in the face of a desperate situation. In humility, King Jehoshaphat utters the words that are the basis of all prayer. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So when we pray, Lord, I don't know what to do. This is too big for me to handle. The burden is too great. It seems like the whole world is on my shoulder right now. But Lord, my eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. We should all pray in humility. In this moment, the king captures the very heart of our complete reliance on God. The circumstances of life are often, often overwhelming, isn't it? Our human resources will end, but God's resources do not end. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the stars and the stars that shine. 
He owns all of it. His resources do not end. We must learn to pray like Jehoshaphat. Our eyes are on you. So when the king prays, the people follow his example. So let us read verse 13. Verse 13 said, All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. So put a mental picture in your imagination. Fathers holding the hands of their children. Moms with babies in their arms praying. I can imagine teens and young adults gathered around, families praying together, all of them assembled before the Lord, desperate for deliverance, praying along with their king and waiting for God's answer. Now, the best part is the answer to their prayer. Here comes the answer to their prayer. Verse 14, Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite, a descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Hmm, I like that part. The battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. Verse 14 said, the Spirit of the Lord came. That's what we just sang this morning. These people prayed according to that hymn. They are asking for the Spirit of the Lord to come and be poured out on them in the book of Acts. And so verse 15 said, do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Repeat it. The battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. And the message gets even better for Jehoshaphat and Judah as mentioned in verse 17. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. It is just like God is telling the king and his people, shh, shh, just be still, calm down. Watch me fight this battle for you. Does God still work like that today? Yeah. I believe God does. In believing of who God is and what God has done, we can with faith offer our prayer request with humility. I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And God said in verse 15, Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. Hey, the battle is not yours. It's mine. Verse 18, the response from Jehoshaphat and his people. This is how the people and their king responded. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel. With a very loud voice, they started praising the Lord. Hallelujah! The son of David to the king. So King Jehoshaphat responded, to the outpouring of God's Spirit through Jezreel with worship. 
Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Bowing down and worshiping God is how we also respond to the faithfulness of God in our lives. We cannot go like this. I did it my way. Nope. We cannot do it that way. With humility, we need to bow down before the Lord. Okay. Now, here's the battle strategy. Okay? Now, listen to how they defeated this vast army. The next morning, Jehoshaphat had a radical strategy for battle. Rather than armor bearers or swordsmen leading the way, Jehoshaphat appointed the choir and the worship team to lead the nation to battle. Imagine how our worship team will respond to leading the army into battle. <laughs> hey, Pastor Jeff, uh, get your tailor. And Phil, uh, hang around that keyboard around your neck or something. Put wheels on it. Get up front and me and Larry will be behind you. We, we will follow you, but we will be behind you. This is a strange idea, but the people willingly followed their king. So now let us read verses 20 to 22. I'm not joking. That's what they, they really did. Verse 20, early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord, your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army. So the singers, the choir, are ahead of the army, That not the army ahead of everybody else to protect everybody, but it's the choir, the singers, and then the army followed suit. And this is what they did. They give thanks to the Lord for His love endures forever. Verse 22. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invading Judah and they were defeated. So as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes. And their enemies were defeated. How do you like that for a battle strategy? <laughs> I don't know. But that's what they did. They sing. They praise the Lord. Never get tired of singing and praising, okay? Never get tired. Even though you cannot carry a tune, you can hum. <laughs> or if you are showering just sing nobody will hear you especially if the the, the water is shh, so loud just sing just praise the lord <clears throat> praise him maybe not audibly but in your heart never get tired of singing and praising and now here is god's power shown the rest of the story is a narration of god's power how he defeated the enemy the Ammonites, verse 23, and Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate them. As they finished slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. So Jehoshaphat and his men went to carry off their plunder. And they found among them a great amount of equipment and clothing and also articles of value, more than they could take away. There was so much plunder that it took three days to collect it. On the fourth day, they assembled in the valley of Bereka, where they praised the Lord. This is why it is called the valley of Bereka to this day. Then, 
led by Jehoshaphat their king, all the men of Judah and Jerusalem returned joyfully to Jerusalem, for the Lord had given them cause to rejoice over their enemies. Verse 28, they entered Jerusalem and went to the temple of the Lord with harps and lyres and trumpets, with guitars, bass guitars, keyboards, Maybe we'll, we'll have to use the other, the other instruments here in the church in order to start singing praises to the Lord as well. Verse 29, the fear of God came on all the surrounding kingdoms when they heard how the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. And the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was at peace for his God had given them rest on every side. It's not the king who given them rest. It is God who gave them them rest. God caused the armies attacking Jehoshaphat and his people to fight against each other. Jehoshaphat and his people didn't need to do any fighting. They only needed to stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord just as the Spirit of the Lord had told them. It all sounds unbelievable, right? Uh, I cannot decipher your faces right now. You're too serious. It all sounds unbelievable. Things like these don't happen today, do they? Maybe they don't happen because we spend too much time relying on our, on our own resources and strength. I did it my way. We rely on a building like our beautiful sanctuary to grow the church. Ah, if we will just make this beautiful, a beautiful place to, to worship, people will come. No. We rely on church programs to bring people in. Halloweens, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, you name it. Sunday school rooms, social, social hall rooms, and all of those. Hey, if we will have all those, people will come in. No, they don't come in. We rely on handsome pastors. Right, Jeff? They don't come even though how handsome your pastors are. We rely on the state-of-the-art equipments. If we have all these equipments in our church, woohoo, people will come in. Now, what we need is to rely on God and pray. Pray. So please join half million Nazarenes from USA and Canada. Download that app. Go to those devotional materials. See how God will work in the lives of Nazarenes here in our region. So who want to see our church grow? I will raise both hands. Yeah? Woohoo, yep. I saw those hands. We want to see our church grow. We want to see our church grow. In reality, this is what? This is God's church, not ours. This is God's church, not our church. Let us rely on the resource of God. The very first resource is Pray. Pray. Is it possible that God might move today as God moved then? Can He still do it? We will never know if we don't pray. Pray like Jehoshaphat and his people. We will never see God defeat the forces of darkness in our world and community unless we pray. We pray for our young people. Too young. They're fighting on our streets. That God will help feed the hungry, heal the sick. So let us rely on the resource of God. Is it possible that God might move today as God moved then? Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. 
We will never see God defeat the forces of darkness in our world and community unless we will start praying. We will never experience deliverance without prayer that moves the very heart of God. So most of the time, we associate mountain tops with victory, right? And valleys with defeat. But after this amazing victory, Jehoshaphat had a new name for the valley where this epic showdown took place. Verse 8. Elijah was God's prophet. Elijah stood close by and ere the prophet left him, he heard his servant cry, let thy mantle fall on me, let thy mantle Pastor Rex, and thank you everyone for tuning in to our Sunday service. If you have been blessed by today's message and you are watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click the notification bell to be notified of our future videos. If you would like to support this ministry with your offerings or donations, please send them to Mosaic and Church of the Nazarene, 8499 North Dort Highway, Mount Morris, Michigan, 48458. Or you can also show your support through donating at our Patreon page, which is located at patreon.com slash mosaicnaz. Please join us at our next service. We welcome you and your family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 1030. We pray the Lord would bless you so that you then will become a blessing to others.